fabulous fourth grade parents, and welcome to Parent Quick Smart, Episode 6, Understanding Equivalent Fractions for Unit 6. In this unit of study, students will build an understanding of equivalent fractions and how to make equivalent fractions. An equivalent fraction is a fraction that names the same amount. So you can see here that 3 fourths and 6 eighths show the same amount of the whole or the same area of the whole. However, 6 eighths is broken into smaller pieces. In this unit, students will work to build this understanding of equivalent fractions. They will begin their work by using models and drawing lots of pictures. It's important for students to spend as much time as they need building that understanding with those concrete models before they jump to the abstract and the algorithm. One strategy for naming equivalent fractions is to use fraction strips. Fraction strips are manipulatives that students use in class. You have access to virtual fraction strips online on thinkcentral.com using the student's password that their teacher gave them. These fraction strips are all related to one whole, and students can see which fractions are the same size as others. Students could take the tile for one-fifth and see which other fractions are equivalent. Students could match two-tenths to one-fifth because it covers the same amount of area. It just uses different sized pieces. The next strategy students could use is drawing a model. Now students struggle sometimes with this strategy because it's hard for them to draw their whole the same amount and it's hard for them to equally divide their whole into the number of pieces. So a helpful tool is for students to draw on grid paper like this student did. You can see this student drew one-fifth and then they broke each fifth into two equal parts making 10 pieces. Two of the pieces are shaded in, showing that 2 tenths is equivalent to 1 fifth. Again, it's really important for students to make sure that their models are drawn equally and that their whole is divided into equal parts. The next strategy for students to use is a number line. This follows the same method as they did when drawing the model. Students would draw their fifths as shown here. Then they would break each fifth into two equal pieces, creating tenths. Now students can use this number line to show that one-fifth is equivalent to two-tenths. As students continue their investigation into creating equivalent fractions, they will start to see a pattern that they can multiply to create these fractions. You can see here that this student broke the each half into two equal pieces, so they multiplied by two to create two-fourths. This student broke each half into three equal pieces, so they multiplied by three. This student broke each half into four equal pieces, and so on. However, students need to recall from their understanding of the identity property of multiplication that multiplying by one results in the same answer. So students won't be multiplying by two. They'll actually be multiplying by two halves, or two over two, which is a fraction equal to one. So when they multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, they're not changing the size of the fraction, they're just changing the number of pieces. And essentially, they're multiplying by 1. So let's look at our example. We have 1 fifth. We're going to multiply it by 2 halves, or 2 over 2. Again, that's equal to 1. And it results in 2 tenths, which is equivalent to 1 fifth. Students know that they can multiply by a fraction equal to 1, to create an equivalent fraction, then they can also divide by a fraction equal to 1. When you divide by a fraction equivalent to 1, you're putting the fraction in its simplest form. A fraction is in its simplest form if it's using the fewest equal size parts as possible. So you can see here we had 2 eighths. We can record 2 eighths as 1 fourth, so it's using fewer parts than 2 eighths. Students will use that same understanding to divide both the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. You can see in this example that the student first divided the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2 to create a simpler fraction of 3 ninths. However, 3 ninths can still be simplified by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 3 to record the simplest form of 1 third. Students know that a fraction is in simplest form when the only common factor between the numerator and the denominator is 1. It's important for students to start to realize that a more efficient strategy of creating a fraction in simplest form is to divide the numerator 
and the denominator by the greatest factor that they share. Next, students are going to continue to build their understanding of fractions, and now they're going to start comparing and ordering fractions. Now again, we're going to start walking through that process, but first using models, then we'll build to use some number lines, and then eventually students will learn to multiply to create common denominators. Let's first look at some models. Again, just like when we were creating equivalent fractions, it's important that students use the same size whole and students equally divide their model into the number of fraction pieces. You can see we have two fifths and one eighth. And it's easy for the students to see that two fifths is a greater fraction than one eighth. Next, students can compare numbers to benchmarks on a number line to help them compare and order fractions. You can see our benchmarks for fractions are zero, one half, and one whole. So let's do an example. We're comparing two-thirds and five-twelfths. Two-thirds is greater than one-half, so I know it's going to go to the right of one-half. Five-twelfths, well, I know six is one-half of twelve, so five-twelfths is less than one-half. I can look at my number line to see that two-thirds is greater than five-twelfths. Let's try another example. Three-fourths and seven-eighths, well, I know that two is half of four, so three-fourths is greater than one-half. Seven-eighths is also greater than one-half. So now students need to come up with a strategy to figure out which one's greater, three-fourths or seven-eighths. In this case, we can look at the size of the missing piece. Three-fourths is missing one-fourth to get to one hole. Seven-eighths is missing one-eighth to get to one hole. Students should know that one-fourth is a larger piece than one-eighth. So seven-eighths is actually closer to one whole, so it is the greater fraction. This type of reasoning can help students when they see that both fractions are greater than one-half. Another strategy is to use a common numerator. If both of the numerators are the same, that means we have the same number of pieces. So now we have to think about which pieces are larger. Well, we know that if we cut one whole into eighths, the eighths would be larger than if we cut one whole into twelfths. So if I had three eighths, that would be larger or greater than three twelfths. Finally, students can use a common denominator. If students have a common denominator, they know that the size of the piece is the same, and they simply have to count the number of pieces to see which fraction is greater. So let's look at this example. We're comparing four fifths and one half. They do not have a common denominator. So let's make a common denominator. You can make a common denominator for those two fractions by using a common multiple. You can see we both fractions, four fifths and one half, share a common denominator or common multiple of 10. We can use multiplication to create equivalent fractions. So now we know that four fifths is equal to eight tenths and one half is equal or equivalent to five tenths. 8 tenths is greater than 5 tenths, so 4 fifths is greater than 1 half. Here are some questions you can ask your child while they're working through creating equivalent fractions. You can find lots of real world connections to fractions in your kitchen. Students can compare and order the amount of each ingredient used in this recipe. Another real world connection is when students are talking about their homework. Jimmy might have finished seven-ninths of his homework. Ashley might have finished half of her homework. Who has finished more? Furthermore, they could say Jimmy finished eight out of 12 problems. Ashley finished seven out of nine problems. Who has a greater fraction of their homework completed? Thanks for tuning in. Remember to always keep in communication with your child's teacher and to check out these cool links for more information. See you next time.